Hello Knights fans and welcome into the first edition of the Knights Baseball Roundup of the 2015 season. I am in the office of the FDU Baseball Head Coach, Gary Puccio. Gary, how you doing? Good, Ryan. How you doing? And congratulations because you've become, I think, the first host since Gavin to make it into a second year. Right. Um, stability is key <laughs> in any athletic program yeah, as well as their shows that talk about them. So, um, Of course, you're coming off a last place finish, but that's okay. That's okay. It's fine. Well, on your personal rankings of hosts, Gary? Jesus. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's 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 talk to the FDU baseball program. Um, I'm going to let you do most of the talking in this show. Okay. Um, in two weeks' time, we'll get really into the season preview, everything like that. This, today, we're talking about um, the night's first pitch dinner. Uh, we'll talk about some of the newcomers to the team. That's about it. And adopt a player. Well, adopt a player, obviously. That, right. that goes into the first pitch dinner. Right, right. But, um... I'll let you do most of the talking. First pitch dinner is only um, three weeks away, yep. and um, there's still plenty of um, things to discuss. Adopt a player, obviously, tickets for sale if you want to get to the dinner. I'll let you take it away here. Yeah, the first pitch dinner is February 21st, which is a Saturday. It starts at 5 p.m. It's at Park Ridge Marriott. It is the fifth annual John Bittman first pitch dinner, which is pretty amazing that we're up to year number five already. Um, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty special. And this year we're honoring the 2000 to 2009 Old Decade Team, yep. which is our first group of 21st Century Knights, as we call them. And uh, we've had a real good response so far. I, I'd say at least half of them already have committed to coming to the dinners, which is, we think is going to be terrific. And we're shooting for 200 people. I mean, we, we finished uh, last year's dinner and had somewhere around 180. And we, we think we got a shot at 200 this year. And, you know, the first year dinner had about 75 people, so it's definitely grown. It's become a solid alumni event, and awesome. as always, the highlight at the end of the night is presenting the ball to the kid that'll throw the first pitch of the 2015 season. Of course. And that's always pretty special to the players. They will keep waiting to see who's going to get the ball. So that's, you know, that little twist that they add to the dinner <laughs> all the time. So. Um, at some point, you'll see uh, information if you want to uh, submit a check to get into the first pitch dinner. We'll put it on your screen. It might have already happened. I don't know. We're going to edit later. <laughs> but uh, for right now, as you just said, adopt a player. There's still a couple spots open. Um, and yeah, fifth, fifth season, fifth year doing the dinner. Congrats yep. again here. Uh, John Bittman and yourself have done a really great job in organizing this every year. Well, John's terrific at taking care of getting alumni involved. I mean, he's been doing that for us for I don't know how long. And and uh, one of the other things at the dinner is uh, our newest Hall of Famer, John Pichowitz, will be speaking. And uh, you know, I, I actually met John at the very first first pitch dinner. It was the first time I ever met him, which was pretty special. He's come to you know all the events, alumni events, and he's been a supporter of adopt player and everything. So it's pretty neat him going in the Hall of Fame. He was the all-time hit leader when he finished playing here. So so we're looking forward to that too. All right, and did you uh, you created a new award? I think you told me right. We certainly did. We have. Uh, an alumni award, which is uh, going to be the FDU Baseball Alumni Award, which will be presented annually at our dinner. And this year it's going to be presented to Dennis O'Brien, who is one of the most supportive people of FDU Baseball in history. He's a Hall of Famer. He uh, actually is the Johnny Vandermeer of FDU Baseball. He pitched back-to-back no-hitters wow. back in his career here. Nice. Uh, Left-handed pitcher and just a great guy, a very humble guy. He doesn't doesn't. Uh, want a lot of fanfare about what he's done for the program, but the man has been absolutely incredibly supportive and does an awful lot of stuff. So not only is he going to be the recipient of the award, but the award is going to be named after him from here on in. So it's going to become the awesome. FDU Dennis O'Brien Alumni Award, which, yeah, we think is pretty special. That's great. And for people that don't know, Dennis is the one who started the Hollywood Scholarship Program. Oh, which nice. is Yeah, which was named after his old coach. So Excellent. All right, well... A lot of information to take in, alum. If you're still not going to this first pitch dinner, you really ought to make it out on Saturday. Make yourself available on the 21st. You know, I do okay. want to mention that, yep. that just to let you know the kind of turnout we've had with alumni over the years is uh, we actually had a representative from every decade last year, from the 1950s all the way to the 1950s, so all the way up to 2010. We had at least one alumni from every decade, which is, I mean, it's mind boggling that. Uh, we get that many people. We had somewhere around 25, 26 alumni at the event and about 10 Hall of Famers. So. You think you can get it again? Let's shooting see. for it. All I right, mean, we're well, shooting for we'll it. See. So. All right, well, that, that's everything about the first pitch dinner. Um, let's turn our attention now to this year's 2015 Knights team. Um, 
First of all, I mean, how has the offseason treated you uh, and the players? Have you, have you talked about talked to them about their offseason workouts and how they're feeling heading into this season? Yeah, we got a couple injuries already, so I mean, we'll, we'll save those for another day. But uh, maybe get them out of the way now. Uh, well, the they're gone for the year, so okay, well. know what else is new? Yeah. You know, depth is always an issue at, uh, at our program for some reason. But we do have more spots. We we did not graduate anyone, and we, and we do have uh, about eight new guys coming in. Right. So. So at least we do have some more depth to the team, and I think that's going to be a plus. Well, so I honestly don't think we were that far away last year. I mean, we lost so many close conference games. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as Bill Parcell says you are, what your record says you are, and our record is not too good right now. As of last year. But right. this year, it's a new slate. Zero, zero again. Exactly. Yeah. There you and, go. Uh, in, a, in a tie for first place with everybody else. There you, you go. See. Now, you know, I was six and seven last year until the snowstorm, and we didn't do nothing for a month. But uh, anyway. Yeah. The snow. Um, Unbelievable. Let's talk about the turnover. Uh, like you said, you didn't graduate anybody. Um, you got seven new faces in the program, actually six and one returnee. So let's give you the floor. I think it's seven and one returnee. Is that what it is? I think so. I think it's eight total. Okay. Well, we're going to get into them. Okay. And um, let's talk about our one returnee first. Um, he started. He came uh, in his freshman year. Um, friends of uh, several players on the, on, the, on the baseball team. Right. I think he's friends with anyone, everyone that he, he's met on, the, on campus and He's the president of the Student Athlete Association Committee. Um, he's a great guy. Corbin Gapsky is back on the team right. this year. Clearly the most popular kid in athletics at FDU. I mean, hands down. Yeah, there's that. a prom king, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's been like, you know, Mr. Everything here at FDU. And, and he, we actually recruited him to come here back when he was a freshman and uh, was a member of our team and went to the playoffs in 2012. And, and then things kind of sidetracked and he became uh, involved with you know, catching up with Corbin, his famous. Uh, we had him weekly, in the office, right? His, and he and he, he actually found a career for himself because I think he is absolutely phenomenal at all that stuff. I think he's too. Yep. I mean, so so the kid found a career for himself, and you know, he and I kind of sat down at the end of his junior year, and I said, you know what, Corbin, you belong on a baseball team again. I mean, it's right is right, and uh, you know, we were able to correct whatever misgivings there might have been after freshman season, and and. Uh, I'm very happy to have him back. He's just yeah. a, a real good kid. He's great for chemistry, and, and uh, I you know, agree. as I said, just you can't beat his popularity. No, yeah, I agree. I think he, I think it'd be great for chemistry, if, um, and it's a good story. So yep. I think I, I'm, I'm happy to. Be, I just saw him actually an hour ago. Uh, I know. hope he was hitting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I saw him on the I saw him on the walkway. Okay, we were just talking about. Yeah, so it's both of our last semesters ever. There you, you know. go. That's um, right. So I got a new host sooner or later. Huh? Yeah, probably, there probably next year. There but this go. year it's a uh, well, so imagine it's a fifteen season. Yeah, season right. Right. You know? I'm trying to move up this there this host rankings. Yeah, you got them. Uh, <laughs> okay, so you got a bunch of other newcomers. You got one JUCO transfer, and right. then you got a bunch of freshmen. But you just told me before the show started, you said you have a lot of depth this year. Maybe for the first time since you've been here. I definitely feel that um, way, position player wise. We definitely do. So. But give me give me a little insight into all these kids. You got some uh, some okay. good hitters. You got some good fielders. You got a nice mix of uh, well, the, the junior college transfer is a kid named Christopher Grupp. Mm -hmm. He played at uh, Cedar Creek down in Texas. Outstanding junior college program. Solid catch behind the plate. Definitely gets some depth to our uh, catching situation, and, and we're very happy to have him. A real good kid. Works hard. It's been been a real plus. Very happy with him. And then we added a whole bunch of freshmen. Uh, Hopefully I don't forget anyone, but but uh, let's see. We got Jason Fatzinger, who's from Pennsylvania area. He's should be a solid hitter for us. He's another outstanding young man. Had like a 3.5 GPA this semester, so he's off to a real good start. Uh, Ryan McNaughton, who's a local guy from uh, I don't know if it's I always do this wrong, Pascack Valley or Pascack Hills. I don't remember, but but Tom Gatoni was his athletic director who's a Hall of Fame baseball player here and kind of keyed us into him. And Ryan had a real nice fall, hit the ball outstanding, played some third, first, outfield, you know, kind of can do a lot of things for you. So he's been very solid. Mm -hmm. um, then we got Bobby Romano, who's a shortstop all Philadelphia area from Archbishop Ryan, which is a real good baseball program. And, and uh, you know, he'll play some short and he'll play some third for us and, and expect big things out of him as the years go on. He's just a very solid baseball player. Uh, and we have Justin Sportman, who is J.P. Sportman's brother. Right. Uh, you know, I don't plan to say that too often because in fairness to Justin, you got to let Justin be Justin. And, mm -hmm. and the kid's a hard worker. He's got good speed, outfielder. Uh, just a good, solid kid. Another very good student. Had a very good fall in the classroom for us. So we're pleased with him. Uh, we have a lefty pitcher that we added named Justin Estevez. 
he is a local kid also that tried out for the team and uh, hopefully we you know we don't have too many left handers out of the pen so hopefully he's going to be able to give us a hand there and we're counting on that and Max Wolf is a right handed pitcher from Oklahoma he was the first kid from Oklahoma that we had in the there program. you go and it's a bit of a project like you know we need some work on uh, control and stuff but but has progressed nicely over the fall and, and we think he's going to be of help. So like you said, a lot of good depth added to this night's team and we're very excited to get the season underway. Last week in February is the uh, start of the 2015 season. Um, first pitch dinner is a week before that, Saturday the 21st, as we've said several times during the show. My last question before we go um, is, you know, there's still some time obviously in between now and the start of the season. How are you going to get the kids ready physically, mentally? What do you have planned for them? Yeah, what's always great about baseball in the Northeast is, you know, we've had 40 degree weather over the whole month of January, probably could have been outside five, six times, and of course, now that the kids come back, we get hit with a snowstorm, and right. the field's covered, and, and everything else, so we're kind of stuck starting indoors, which is, I guess, a perennial problem. A Northeast the Northeast stable. Right, yeah. just the way it works, so, so that always makes it harder, because when you're indoors, you know, your outfielders can't take fly balls, there's only so, certain things they can do. Right. So we're going to do everything we can to prepare given the circumstances and obviously when we get the opportunity to get outside we're going to want to do that because you know we open at North Fork State and obviously they're outside because Virginia's weather is a lot better than New York and New Jersey's weather so yeah, so you start every season down right, south where it's warmer right right, right. We try to. it's just you know the fact of being a Northeast team you're always going to have a, a losing record early because you're playing teams that have been outside and you're not so one of the benefits this year obviously by going down there is we're not just playing a southern team, we're also playing Iona and Lehigh, so they have the same situation we have about coming out of the, the snow and the cold in the northeast. So, um, is so it, it's interesting, it do they know that that's the reason why they're all down there? Is that like oh, kind yeah. of an overriding yeah, it's just theme the way, right there? Just the way it works. So yeah, they just all want the team has to go. Yeah, you have no choice. I mean, we're not going to play yeah. here in the snow, so you have true. no choice. So, it's very true. so you have to go south. And, Even and, when the snow's gone, it is freezing up here right. in the it's beginning just, of the season. Th that time of year is just, uh, I think we open up here. Like March fourth at Rutgers. I believe so that's, uh, you're right. Yeah, that should be a, that should be a wear seventy two jacket. It's my alma mater. Is it really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I, yeah, I mean, I know well, they're very good. I mean, they're very good baseball program, obviously. So they've done a you know a great job. Joe Leterio, their coach, was the former Wagner coach up until a couple that's of years right, ago. That's right. That's right. So before him, Fred Hill Senior, all that. Right, Freddie Hill's a, a icon in the baseball worlds of college baseball. He's just a phenomenal man. Uh, I know him very well, and he's just been a good friend to us, that's for sure. Excellent. Years, so. I got to meet him once when I was working for a Rutgers Student Radio. He's a great guy. Yeah, he's just a good man. So. Um, but let's bring it back yes. to FDU Baseball. Yes. Um, and that, thank you. So that is, um, you know, it's obviously it hurts being a Northeast staple of playing, just practicing indoors, but you will have that outdoor competition. That is February 27th. That's the beginning of it. Uh, and the Norfolk State Tournament, as you said, Lehigh and Iona will also be involved. You can follow along on FDUnights.com for every update coming down uh, from Virginia, and we will have another night's baseball roundup uh, two weeks from today, most likely. Um, we'll preview the first pitch dinner and then talk about yeah, and the, the one, season. The one thing I do want to say is, you know, last year we had no seniors, not to make an excuse for, for the season we had, but so many of those close games where, you know, you, you didn't have an older kid with experience. I, th I think we started a freshman and sophomore in every position except center field where Riley is. So the fact that we have a little bit older team and guys with more experience and everything, it just should get better. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, you know, Knight fans and alumni should expect that the program's going to return the corner again and start heading back up. And again, we have some injuries with our pitching staff and stuff, but, but I still feel pretty confident that this, this year is going to be a better year. We have that experience. You have a, a number of upperclassmen now that have moved up. Your captains have had, now this is their second year, being captain, so they have that experience as well, um, and you've got that added depth. So, in two weeks' time, we'll break it all down for you, alumni, of fans of the FD baseball program. Right Can't now, get, get your started. tickets for the first pitch dinner. That's, That's the right. name of the game. That's right. Get your tickets. Adopt a player. Most importantly, um, there's only a couple left. Right. We we actually have had a real good response from the alum. Last year, the alumni sponsored every single kid on the team. That that every kid had a sponsor, which was terrific. Now and only we'll couple shoot for that again, right? And we're and we're within uh, yeah two or three of that happening. So. There you go. So reach out to Gary. Um, you'll have the address. We'll put it up on the screen for you. And thanks for watching this week. Uh, two weeks time, we'll we'll break everything down about the opening weekend and the the team more in depth. And we'll talk a little bit first pitch dinner as well. 
Thank you, Gary. And yeah, you're much better in your start of your second year. I mean, I gotta say, you know. there's also experience here on this side of the couch. Believe me, my first year, my first interview, I was like, uh, Gary. <laughs> No, I wasn't that bad. No, you if weren't. anyone watched that first episode, but um, you still thank be, you. You still beat Chris Dry. <laughs> thank you for watching this Knights Baseball Roundup. See you again in two weeks.